Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I just wanted to give a little update on my imports. So I got my imports in about um, six, seven weeks ago and they've all been doing really good. So I wanted to kind of share some of the steps that I did in the acclimation process and kind of show you how they're doing as, as we go. So first kind of step that I did when it came to acclimation. Now you probably heard this from you know, anyone who's imported plants, but uh, the first thing that you want to do is to stick your plants after you like unbox them, um, stick them straight into a tub of water. Water management and handling water stress is kind of going to be the most important thing when it comes to successfully importing plants. The process of importing is very, very rough on the plant's roots, so the plants get pulled out of their substrate, the roots get completely cleaned off, uh, they get treated with chemical to make sure there's no bugs or anything on them so that they can pass um, a phytosanitary certificate and then they spend, you know, however long in a box to come overseas and the temperatures might fluctuate and they're not really getting water in that time. So when you get them in, they're probably um, very dehydrated and stressed and putting them right into water is one of the best ways that you can help them to recover quickly. Now, another thing that is really maybe counterintuitive, but that I did with my plants that I think has really helped is to actually cut off any leaves that are damaged or yellowing so that you're really only left with like one or two leaves. This is my Philodendron Esmeralda Dense Narrow. You can see it's doing really well. Um, it's getting a new leaf. It's got some really good roots going. And this was one of the first ones to come out of the clear bin that I use to keep the humidity high, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but this was one of the first ones to come out of that like 100% humidity and go into like 60% room humidity. But you can maybe see just how many nodes there are on this plant. I cut off a leaf basically from every node except leaving these two. The leaves were very damaged and the root system on this guy when I got them in was very, very minimal. It wasn't great. So you might think when the plant doesn't have a lot of roots that it's better to have more leaves. We maybe think like the more leaves it has, the more chlorophyll it has, the more it can photosynthesize and have energy to grow roots. But it doesn't necessarily work like that. You kind of need the roots before you have the leaves. So the bigger the leaf you have, the more opportunity water basically has to leave the plant, either through transpiration or just evaporation or whatever. Whenever you have a higher concentration of water in the leaf than you have in the environment, in the air surrounding it, the water is naturally going to want to leave the leaf and go into the environment. Now, if the root system on the plant isn't very robust, that root system is not going to be able to supply enough water to compensate for the amount that the plant is losing. And when the plant is losing more than it can replace, that's when you're going to get floppy, droopy, limp leaves, and you're going to get leaf yellowing because the plant basically realizes that it can't support all the leaves. So it's just going to drop it until it gets to a level that it can support. And anytime you import plants, because of that harsh root process, you are going to lose roots and it's not gonna be at the same capacity for supporting leaves as it was before. So by chopping a few leaves off, you're actually doing your plant a favor, kind of getting one step ahead in the game. The plant will kind of do it itself. Now, leaves do have certain nutrients in them that are mobile that essentially the plant can reuse if you let it go yellow all by itself but the benefits to letting the plant do that on its own it's not really worth it because all that time while the leaf is still on it's going to be losing moisture through that leaf when you import plants they're losing water right away they're in a very stressful circumstance so instead of waiting for that process i think you actually benefit more by chopping them off um, right away, just get it over with 
As soon as you reduce the surface area where the water can leave, the plant will have a much less stressful time and a much easier time getting used to the new environment. Um, and this is kind of interesting because this is something that my mom and I have observed a few times importing plants. So a couple years ago, we imported a few Anthurium magnificums. We got a few that I think were medium size and a couple that were seedling size. And it was very interesting because the seedling size actually, I'm gonna put this guy down. The seedling size actually outpaced the medium size eventually. They seem to recover from the import process quicker and they ended up getting larger leaves more quickly than the medium size ones. And I think why that is, is so say you have two plants, they have like the same amount of root mass, but one has a massive leaf and one has a small leaf. It's going to be much harder for that small root system to support a big leaf versus a small leaf. So the plant with the small leaf is going to have less stress, essentially. Um, the leaf will be happy and then it can just focus on growing roots. Whereas the plant with the large leaf, it's like it's going to be constantly playing catch up and it's going to have to expend resources on that big leaf that it could be using to grow new roots. So you can actually be better off having a small plant that's happier because it's less stressed, like the root to leaf ratio is better and it will actually recover more quickly from importing in what I've experienced. It's interesting because I've actually been watching a lot of bonsai videos recently and when you see bonsai artists, they will, when they're say taking like a, uh, a nursery stock and, and putting it in a bonsai pot or they're like repotting a bonsai, they might disturb the roots and after they've disturbed the roots or the tree has lost roots, in order to prevent killing the tree, um, they will severely defoliate the tree. Like they will cut off maybe like 90% of the foliage and sometimes they'll even take like a paste, like a sealant and put it on the branches so that the um, branches, the cut branches aren't a place where water can be lost. So by defoliating, by taking off the leaves, by reducing the surface area in the leaves where moisture can be lost, um, they actually encourage root growth and have less stress to the tree because it doesn't have to support all these leaves. And then once it does have a healthy root system, then the plant will grow leaves and it'll be happy. And I think the same thing happens with aeroids. So that's kind of my top unlikely tip for importing is cut off as much foliage as you can stand to lose. The bigger the root system that the plant comes in with, the more foliage it will be able to maintain. If it has a very minimal root system, then be extra aggressive uh, with taking off leaves. Now, I leave my plants in water for about 24 hours. You can leave your plants in longer. Some people will add like an air stone so they make sure there's lots of oxygen in the water. Personally, I don't like my plants to start growing roots in water because I find it more difficult for the plants to transition. So about 24 hours after they've been in water, I will go and do a root assessment. I'll show you this Anthurium Bessier F, for example. Now this one had a pretty, what looked like a pretty big root system uh, when I started with it. The thing about anthuriums is that they have these really big chunky roots and they usually get broken in the process of importing. So even if the roots look fine, if they're broken, they will eventually rot and die. So you really have to go through and cut off anything that is broken because if you don't cut it it's just going to rot and cause more problems later so probably on this one i i probably cut off maybe like 50 percent of the roots that were there and even though they still looked um firm and you might think that they're healthy if they're broken higher up they're just not gonna make it and it doesn't help you 
to keep it. You're better off just starting fresh. I think the, the only thing I was really left with were the main roots, but any of the like secondary or tertiary roots, those break off so, so easily. But it, there was enough roots left that um, it was still able to support these two leaves that it came with. And now it has a really good root system. So I, 24 hours later, that's when I put it in sphagnum moss. For my philodendrons, I used just aeroid mix. So I just went with whatever I kind of wanted to keep my plants in long term. So for anthuriums, that would be sphagnum moss. Anyone who had really, really poor roots and who had like no roots, I would probably put in sphagnum moss just because I know for propagating, I usually have a lot of success with that. And it can be a bit moister and antifungal, so it can have less issues with rot. And there's just a lot of reasons why I find sphagnum moss to be usually pretty, pretty safe. Uh, this is Philodendron Lanyamii. Uh, this one, very thick, rigid leaves. I wasn't really anticipating um, having a lot of problems with this one. And it, it has been pretty, pretty good throughout the import process, even though it's been a little bit slow to root, but the roots were very not, not good on this one when I did that like 24 hour check. Now it can be more difficult with philodendrons versus anthuriums to tell if the roots are still good. I don't know if you can see, but the roots on this guy are red. So it can be difficult to tell when the roots are dark, if they're actually rotten or if they're healthy. And sometimes after they've been treated or after they've been in substrate and they've been stained, they, they can look kind of stringy and not healthy, even though they might still be healthy. So for, for philodendron roots, especially, I make sure to like pull on them. And if the outer sheath like comes away, or is mushy, that's rotten, so you can just cut that off. Um, again, I was pretty uh, aggressive cutting roots off this one, but I decided to just stick it straight into substrate 24 hours later. Then I just made sure that the substrate stayed moist, that it wasn't too dry. And then another thing that I did was I put a heat mat on the bottom of the pots. So after I had planted everyone up after 24 hours, I put them in a clear tote, uh, closed up the door so that the humidity stayed um, about 100%. Keeping the humidity that high helps with the uh, moisture management and preventing moisture loss through the leaves. Now this one, this is um, Anthurium Friedrichsthali and I just took this one out of the high humidity, 100% humidity bin a few weeks ago. No, just a week or two ago. Now, this was one that was looking very, very sad on import and had very, very minimal roots. And it was interesting because actually when I was looking up some information on these guys, some of the info of like when they've been described actually says that they often have very minimal root systems and they're not like hanging in the trees by much. So. I think that might be partially just how this plant grows. It's not with like a super huge root system, but yeah, this one was definitely looking very limp on import, but then much perkier 24 hours later. And I did notice as soon as I took it out of the 100% humidity bin, the leaves were a little bit more droopy. You can probably see there's a bit of damage on the older leaves. Now, I could probably have left it in high humidity for longer or done more of like a gradual transition from like 100% humidity to 50%, which is what it's in now. But you can see how it's got this new leaf and the new leaf is happy. As long as the new growth comes in well, I'm not too worried about it. Um, I do see that it has some new roots growing and that's kind of my criteria for taking plants out of that high humidity bin. I make sure that there's new root growth uh, and if there's new leaf foliage growth, I mean, that's just a, that's just a bonus. I don't I think I saw, I showed you on the um, Bessier Act, that one's also getting um, a new leaf soon, but often the roots will come first and then the, the new growth will, will come later. As far as taking the plants out, and how to transition them from super high humidity to say room conditions. 
her plant stories, Becca had a really great video on how she acclimates her plants to room conditions or how she um, grows her plants in room humidity. And, you know, like she said, a lot of it comes down to the roots. If the roots are robust enough that they can keep up with the moisture loss to the air, then the plant is probably gonna be fine. This guy still has a pretty minimal root system, which I think is why I noticed a little bit of limpness when I moved it to lower humidity. But as the root system is growing, I've noticed even just a couple in a couple days that this guy has been pretty happy. So the only thing I would recommend when you're transitioning from a higher humidity to a lower humidity, one, keep an eye on your plants. If they look really sad after you put them in lower humidity, you can always move them back into high humidity and they should recover pretty quickly. It's no problem. Uh, and then just keep the substrate moist. Like don't let it dry out at first because that period of drought can be stressful on them. So you kind of want to um, avoid that. And whether that's moss, whether that's soil, whether that's perlite or whatever substrate you like to use it all kind of it all kind of works the same as far as in the bin now some people might use fans or stuff in their bin to kind of increase the airflow i didn't do that uh, now let me show you my queen anthurium now she's actually looking uh pretty good she's got a new growth coming um, she does have some roots I can see at the bottom of the pot. So these leaves going yellow and browning, that's pretty much what I expected. Um, because I didn't have like fans or anything going in my little box, there was water kind of pooling at the bottom. And some of these leaves were like drooping down into the, oops. Well, I didn't need that one anyways. <laughs> some of the leaves were kind of like drooping down into the water. Um, and any place where moisture is like touching the leaves is usually gonna damage them and be bad for them. Some of the crisping and, and death at the bottom of the leaves is actually from, from that, from like drooping into the water, which is okay because honestly, these leaves would probably crisp up one way or another. Anthurium's, Anthurium wereoqueanum is just known for being tricky to import. So I'm not worried about keeping any of the leaves that it came with. Since I'm seeing new growth, I know that it's, it's gonna be totally fine. But I found that for the most part, I didn't have any issues with mold, with damage to the plants. I think by having a heat mat at the bottom, it not just encourages root growth, but it also helps to circulate the air and the moisture. So the moisture is evaporating from the substrate, it condenses on the sides, then it falls down and gets kind of soaked back up by the pot. So it has like a mini cycle going and I found with that and just opening up the plants um, every couple days to check on them that was plenty of air and they didn't seem to have an issue with rot or whatever one plant that I did not do the right thing with <laughs> is my anthurium cutiquence now that one I think because of just the, sh the way it was, it kind of fell over in the water when I initially put everybody in that bucket right on import. So he kind of fell over and was submerged in the water for that 24 hour period. And after I potted him up, it seemed like the growth point started rotting. So the plant started rotting from like the top down. Now, once I saw that I cut it up into sections, but all the sections eventually rotted. I didn't catch it quick enough, so that one couldn't be saved, unfortunately. Um, there was like an, a little stick that had an offshoot and it had a little teeny tiny plant growing from that stick and the stick was separate from the other plant that had the rotten growth point. So the stick was actually okay. So I, I removed that, I planted it in moss. It had a root, so I thought it might do okay but the stick when I checked on it the other day seemed to be um, dried up and rotten as well but there's still the little teeny tiny growth point on the end um, the leaves are like two millimeters long that is still alive as of checking on it but I'm not sure if it's going to make it I'm not sure why that like stick that had a root never 
rooted more, but I know one thing with those anthuriums is that they're, they're more of a cool temperature anthurium. So it's possible that by using the heat mat, that was actually like detrimental for that one. But you know, I can't have different conditions for just one of my anthuriums. And I knew that one was kind of risky to import because I've basically only heard bad things about how hard it is, so we'll see. Um, this is another anthurium that I don't think has, I, ca I can't see any roots in the pot, but it's a pretty large pot. I'm sure, I'm sure there are some. Um, the leaves aren't looking great. This is Ophulterianum, but it has, it has a nice little new leaf. So because that one has new growth, I'm pretty confident that this one is doing good. So this one has also been moved. I think it's been moved to my anthurium shelf. So that's about 70, 80% humidity. I keep my anthuriums in there basically until they get too big and have to be moved out of my greenhouse cabinet. So I'm really excited to see how, how this one does. The leaves are pretty thick. So I anticipated that this one would be pretty easy to um, to import and it's been okay. It's maybe maybe I didn't expect quite this much damage considering how big the the leaves are, but since it has new growth, I think I think it will will not be the hardest of the anthuriums. It's also in soil, so it's possible that I accidentally let it dry out a bit too much, but it seems to be pretty happy. Okay, now let's talk a, about a bit more problematic one. Um, so this is my Am Amazon Sunset, my Viracosum Amazon Sunset. This is pretty much what I expected to happen, but this is also my Viracosum Amazon Sunset, and this is also Viracosum Amazon Sunset. So as I've been importing my plants, they all seem to be doing pretty well in the humidity bin. They, for the most part, seemed perky. After a few weeks, a couple weeks for some of them, I was starting to see new root growth but for this guy he kind of kept looking limp and sad even even though I had already all the leaves cut off except this one there wasn't really anything more that I could cut to help it along it just seemed like it wasn't doing very well this plant had a, a long stem so I kind of decided you know what I should just cut my losses and see what happens if I cut it up um, that way I have more notes to work with. If it ends up rotting at the base, you know, like it did, I have a better chance of at least one of the pieces surviving. So I um, chopped it up into sections. I threw the wet sticks into my prop box, um, which is live sphagnum moss on the bottom, and then it is clear with a lid, so it's at 100% humidity. And after a little while, the wet sticks are starting to root and I'm getting a little growth point, which is super exciting. This top piece is the piece I was most hopeful about. And oftentimes that's because plants seem to, or aerates seem to have the best chance of rooting from the freshest nodes, if that makes sense. If the nodes, like you can kind of see here, how it's already sprouted roots and then those roots have dried up, sometimes there's not really enough tissue left that's viable for new roots to grow out of. So for this guy, it's very possible that those roots were just spent and they started to die and there just wasn't enough left for it to survive. But with this newer growth, there's a better chance that those aerial root points, whatever they're, they're called, I'm sure they have a, a technical name, um, there's a, a bigger chance it seems that those are still viable. And I thought even if these two weren't viable. There's there's also a new um, node up here where obviously there hasn't been any aerial roots that have started and then dried up. So there's a very high likelihood that this one is going to grow aerial roots. So worst case scenario, probably at least this node would be viable. What I did with this top guy is I stuck him in water. I found that water seems to be the best and most foolproof for um, number one plants that are very dehydrated because this guy was um, in in soil like this before that but obviously those roots weren't doing anything for it so it's been without water for a very long time at this point so it kind of needs to 
do the whole rehab process again. Same thing as like when I first imported it. So being in water helps it with that to just get like immediate source of water. But I find water is actually the best for these aerial roots on climbing philodendrons, which can sometimes be difficult to get to activate. I don't know what it is. I haven't had much success in soil or in like prop boxes and stuff. It does work, but at the end of the day, like water is my go-to if all else fails. And for, for nodes like these that I had pretty low hopes for that they would actually produce viable roots. It seems to work, seems to work the best. So I just put it in this vial with water filled up and then I put it in my prop box. So again, keep it at hundred percent humidity to minimize water loss through the leaves. And that seemed, seemed to do it. I'm, I'm not worried about losing this one now. I'm very happy to say. Now, what I'll do to transition this one to soil, I think, is um, I'll probably add a bit of soil to this test tube, but still keep it very like wet and muddy. Uh, and, and it should help transition the roots from being like water roots to being soil roots. I've had um, good success with that with propagating. And at this point, it's basically just a propagation, right? Um, in a lot of ways, importing plants is very similar to propagation and if your imports are going south sometimes the best thing that you can do is to just try and propagate them and start again sometimes if the plant is too stressed it will um, it may die at that point but at least you have a chance if you have multiple nodes to, to work with I'll just show you this some um, Bessie again because this one is a good example of how um, anthuriums will do this as well where they they seem to be more likely to grow roots from the newest nodes, from the newest growth. I've had like big chunks of anthurium. Sometimes they'll sell these anthurium pieces with like no roots on them and they won't grow any roots until it puts out a, a growth point. It'll actually put out the growth point first and then the roots will grow not from the old node, but they'll grow from the, the new growth point from the new node. I guess that's another thing when you are importing that's one reason why it helps to keep the humidity high. That will also encourage these aerial roots that are higher up and not necessarily in the substrate to activate. Um, if you do have moss that you can kind of like heap up around the freshest nodes, that, that can help because they're, they're pretty likely to start sprouting. Um, they're pretty likely to start sprouting from there. I think that's pretty much everyone. Um, the only other ones are the ones in my vivarium. So I had a little tiny orchid that I imported that actually is doing really well. I think that one's gonna make it. Um, unfortunately, my little fern, my Alaphoglossum patellum, palatum, the fronds just like started falling off and it seemed like the, the base was rotting. So that's really unfortunate. I don't think that I'll be able to save that one and unfortunately I'm not really sure what I should have done differently. I did kind of at the beginning try and like pull it apart to get two sections so that I could keep two in like different environments just in case one of them died. But yeah now I'm thinking that maybe wasn't a good idea. Maybe it got broken. Maybe it dried out a bit too much. Like it's it can be really hard to know in the like vivarium environment. So I'm kind of sad about that one because it seemed like it was doing really well and then I realized the base was all rotten even though the fronds still look good. But anyways, it happens. I, I knew right from the beginning I was taking a chance on that one. I would definitely try again though because that was a really, really cool plant. I think that's it for the updates. Let me know if you have any of your own tips and tricks for importing, whether you like importing, whether you prefer just buying from shops because you know it is a process it's like i said been six or seven weeks and i'm only now getting um leaves that are half decent and a lot of them you know look like this and that's just kind of what you have to expect but i hope you found this at least uh, a little bit helpful seeing the journey that my plants have gone through thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Thank you.